connection with Kayona Beach Park is that I'm a lifetime resident here in Waimanalo. Um, been here 47 years. Uh, literally every summer, we would spend three months here camping. That's when camping was allowed here. So this is in the 70s and the 80s. And um, literally, like I said, literally we would spend three months here camping. We, my dad would come ahead of school getting out. He would prepare the site. When school broke, we would the family would move into our tents here at Kayona. Um, we would spend the days fishing, diving, and enjoying the beach. And nighttime, we would have marshmallows and go night crabbing and just enjoying the the beautiful Kayona Beach Park for literally, like I said, three months at a time. At the end of summer, a week before summer was over, we would break our tent down go back home and then get ready for school. So I, I've come from a large family. My, um, it's my mom and dad and seven children. So I'm the youngest of seven children. And I, I look back at my childhood memories. That's those memories of camping here at Kayona was probably my, my dearest memories. So that's my connection to this park um, back. And then somewhere in the late 80s, this boat ramp the old boat ramp that existed here that was used heavily by all the fishermen in Waimanalo was um, was destroyed by the weather uh, over, a, over a year's period I guess some tide changes destroyed the existing ramp so the city and county actually um, fenced off this area made it un inaccessible and part of it was to protect the public from um, it had some steep erosion problems and to help keep the park from eroding further they installed concrete and uh, large um, concrete piping to kind of uh, secure the, the landscape um, and it stayed that way for uh, 20 years and over that time period the the tides changed back some of the um, sand returned um, and put the beach back to what I remember it, you know, back in, so uh, say 40, 40 plus years ago, it, it, it returned back to normal, what, what it looked like in the past. And at that point, um, some of the fishermen, the local fishermen were uh, lobbying the city and county, the state, and the Hawaiian Homestead um, Association to put the ramp back and make it usable again, because um, Waimanalo is a coastal, community with a large um, percentage of the of its um, the people that live here are fishermen and uh, subsistence fishermen so people who you know harvest from the sea for their families and for for their meals and you know it was sad because for that period the the um, boat ram was inaccessible so going back and forth um, you know fighting red tape and bureaucracy government bureaucracy you know the fight went on for literally 20 years and um, you know without with small gains without any much much movement in the direction that the community wanted but so at some point uh, they had enough you know they asked and they tried to um, work through protocol and work through the the right channels and the right the right um, um, ways but you know, they waited and waited and waited, and they had enough, and they decided that they, would, they were going to literally take it into their own hands and um, do their part of putting, uh, returning the ramp back to a usable state. So they um, they gathered resources, community resources, um, literally the labor and the hands uh, and the backs of uh, the local fishermen, and they dug their way through and. They started the construction of a new ramp, and uh, maybe a part part way through it, of course, um, the city and county and the state came by, and they they were not in agreement because um, the right approvals, the right permission, um, the right permitting, the right paperwork wasn't obtained. But the fishermen um, they they just pushed forward and. Um, they actually constructed it, and there's uh, lots of um, 
um, input from a lot of the local fishermen. They reached out to their resources. Uh, they were able to secure some concrete and um, the labor of the, the community and they actually put this in. So what it looks like today is what, it, what, what they did. And it was the hard work of these guys. A lot of the local people, Haywood Kalima, probably was spearheading this uh, longtime resident and longtime fisherman in Waimanalo. He gathered the resources, he gathered the brothers from around here and the sisters from around here, and they, they did it. They did it themselves. They uh, put a lot of hard work into it. And of course, um, the city and the state didn't agree with it. And it actually came to a head. It came to a, um, a head where police officers were called and city representatives and state representatives were here um, ordering it to be stopped, all construction to be halted. But um, with the help of some city council members, uh, state representatives, and um, some higher up authorities coming down and having a discussion and seeing what was done, and um, seeing all the hard work that was put into it, you know, they came to some agreement and and let it stand the way it is. There, there's still some some issues uh, with liabilities and some, um, you know, there, there's some sensitivities around the use of the boat ramp. But um, for all it's worth, um, it, it's it's usable. And again, once again. The uh, community fishermen are able to access the ocean, access the ice boxes, and get out there and and fish sustainable, uh, sustainable um, for for their families, um, and do substance fishing and provide for the uh, for their their cocktail tables at home. So that that was a big success, and and that's that's where I, I come in again. So what happened was in celebration of this um, the renewal of the boat ramp. Um, the, revi um, the revitalization of the park. The park is, um, was Uncle Haywood and his gang started uh, planting grass, planting trees, um, building walls to you know, beautify this area and, 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 and inject some life back into it. And since then, it, it's become literally on the weekends the heart of Waimanalo. Um, if, if any any time you stop by here on the weekends, it's standing remote, and you, all you all you see is Kiki, um, to Kupuna enjoying themselves, and and I think that's, I mean that's the life uh, on the weekends. This place is the lifeline of of Waimanalo, I mean, and you see it in the smiling faces of, like I said, the, from the Kiki to the Kupuna, uh, that's what you see, and um, so that I mean that's the wonderful part of it, uh, bringing the life back to the park, which was for. For years desolate because um, it was inaccessible um, the, the city and county put up fencing that kept the, the kids and the families off the beaches so again it's just um, um, a renaissance of the Kayona Beach Park and when when all of this um, revitalization happened all the people and the family and the community returned here to a uh, important part of the a part of their community um, and uh, to me I think that Kayona Beach Park has become the pico of Waimanalo um, the center where families are returned to the beach, returned to gathering together and celebrating and being a part and, and being Ohana like it was in the past. So back to the to the ramp. So in celebration of the ramp being um, reconstructed, um, the, 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 the fishermen here decided that they wanted to celebrate it. So they, they put on a big party. They would have an annual party here and also to, and also to celebrate the, the revitalization of the ramp is that we started this appeal tournament so it started off with you know some of the local guys maybe 10 15 boats and their and their crews and they would go out there and spend the day in um, in fishing and fellowship and uh, catching papil and they would return back to the ramp you know way off their prize way off their fish um, share some fishing tails and enjoy each other's company and um, they would have some small prizes for uh, for the winners. And so at that point, um, I, would, I, I would say the second year into it, uh, I myself joined it as um, as a captain of a boat and a team. I, I brought a team into the tournament, and and right away I, I, I fell in love with it, and and it brought me back to my childhood. I'm enjoying the, enjoying the bay here. It brought me back to Kayona Beach Park. So it, so. 
right off the bat, I said that I wanted to be more a part of it. So over the next two years, um, I got involved, heavily involved, and it ended up, you know, falling onto my shoulders. And over 15 years later, here we are. And we just, yesterday, September 15, we celebrated our 15th um, anniversary, 15th annual Waimanalo Boat Ramp Appeal Tournament. Um, we've, we've grown, we started off at, as gra on a grassroots level. And like I said, you know, maybe roughly 10 to 15 boats. And we've, we've grown into a, you know, a, um, anticipated community event and now an annual community event. And now, you know, we um, host you know, roughly around 50 boats. And we host not only Waimanalo fishermen, we extended um, our reach and we, we host people, uh, fishermen from Hawaii Kai, Waimanalo, Kailua, Kaneohe, Kahalu, reaching all the way down to Haula and Laie. And, um, and we also, we also have uh, a steady flow of fishermen coming in from Kahana Bay. And you know, what I like about that is that we're opening up our, our, um, our beautiful community for that day to different other communities, other fishing communities who have you know, similar goals and similar objectives to spread the word about fishing sustainable um, and um, sustaining our uh, marine resources that's important uh, our mantra here at the Wamanala Boat Ramp Field Tournament is that we fish today so that we can fish for tomorrow my goal is that my my children and my grandchildren can, can enjoy the same resources that we we enjoy today and I think that's something that's been passed on from all of um, our kupuna here in Wamanala and I want to make sure that message continues but that message is only it's only um, it, it gains its value if we spread it around. So by inviting different communities to join us, we have an opportunity to share that message and hopefully that they take it back to their communities and their, their network of friends and family and we can get this message flowing beyond Waimanalo. Because um, although Waimanalo is a beautiful place and we, we, we focus here on, on Waimanalo and the Bay, we want that message to, you know, get out um, further statewide uh, island-wide statewide and even um, globally right that should be the message so we're doing our little part and another thing that we work on here is um we want to build our community we want to build Waimanalo Waimanalo is a beautiful place I love this place with the, with the, from the bottom of my heart I love this place and I want um, it's our opportunity to give back and lift this community up and um, so we invite others to share in, in, in the lifting up of our community but what that does is that Waimanalo is a very unique place. It's, it's filled with aloha. And you, when you, you look in a dictionary under the word aloha, I'm sure Waimanalo is going to be part of it because that's, that's how special this place is and the people that are here. So what we want to do is we want to spread that aloha beyond here. I think this island, this state would be a better place if some of the aloha that is generated here in Waimanalo is spread beyond it. Um, and so that's that's initially I mean I guess that's um, basically what we what we try to do each year and each year our event serves as a, a venue and as a springboard to spreading some of those messages and um, and on top of that we you know our community can enjoy each other's company we can enjoy um, the beautiful ocean we can enjoy fellowship and friendship and it's all in the in the um, we gather as, as fishermen fishermen first but after that is we gather as a community and like I said we've, we've grown from a grassroots um, event and we've, we've we've gotten to where we we are um, now but not knowing uh, not forgetting where we came from because basically that's what that's what our message is about it's about loving this community taking care of it being stewards to um, all the gifts that we, we have here stewards for um, our ocean and uh, our coastlines so um, we actually my wife and I and uh, my family we started um, with the with the Waimanalo fishing Waimanalo boat ramp appeal tournament as our base we started a nonprofit organization a 501c um, recognized um, organization and it's called Napu'u Omale and um, 
that that name has a very special meaning to this area um, according to legend a fishing god fishing goddess uh, Malay um, watched over the bay watched over the fishermen took care of them and um, she would post herself along the coast here um, on the hillsides watching watching over and protecting the fishermen the resources here and the ocean so Napuo Malay means the many hills of Malay the many hills that she would perch herself on in watching over the bay so we felt that that was uh, appropriate and that's how we come up with our name and what we're again um, the mission of the of the nonprofit is is uh, works simultaneously and in, in in conjunction with the boat ramp of field tournament our event that's our flagship event but um, we share the same mission we want to lift our community we want to um, encourage the education of con ocean and marine resource conservation and we want to um, um, spread the word on sustainable fishing fishing for the future and also the proper stewardship of our um, ocean and our um, coastlines here in Wamanala. Well, not here, only here in Wamanala, but focusing here in Wamanala. So that's a little bit, and, and in the future, we'd like to do more community events, and we're working on it, and um, you know, hopefully down the road, we can do more in the way of education, especially for our kids. We'd like to work with the, the two schools that we have here. Well, actually, we have uh, three schools here in Wamanala that we'd we like to eventually work side by side with them in um, in educating our children for um, in, in along the lines of uh, ancient Hawaiian fishing cultural uh, practices and again conservation and sustainability um, sorry it's so long-winded but I, I need to mention other things we have other community organizations in Waimanalo that we partner with and we collaborate with so we have the Waimanalo Canoe Club Job Corps of Waimanalo um, all the, a lot of the local businesses and organizations in Waimanalo, they, um, they support and kukua our, our tournament every year in helping us to spread the word. <clears throat> so, and I'm not surprised because that's just the spirit of Waimanalo and that falls right into our, um, you know, our, our way of living and I think our community and the way we were brought up here in this community. Again, I've been here 47 years, and <clears throat> I love this. This has been my only home, and I expect this to be my only, uh, my, my, yeah, like I said, my only home. Uh, uh, there's, there's no plans to move out of this place. I love it so much, and um, my, I raise my, I'm raising my family here, and you know, it's always been a push that we be a part of this community. We, we don't only live here in this community; we, that we be a part of it, an active part, and you know, a positive part of it. So. I mean, that's my little story. Um, I hope that you got a you got a little look into the window of um, our beautiful community here, and especially this special place um, for our community, this special place of Waimanalo of Waimanalo and uh, Kaiona Beach Park. This became a special part of. Uh, that revitalization and it's special to this area special to our community and what it is is a memorial for our um, for our fishermen of the past fishermen and fisherwomen of the past um, it recognizes uh, community members and fishermen prominent fishermen from you know way back and I'm very proud of this uh, monument it means a lot to myself and I know to the rest of the rest of the community and I'm I'm honored because both my maternal and my paternal grandfathers are, are listed here so it's, it's a great, it has a very special meaning to me but besides my grandfathers I mean there's uh, literally hundred hundred hundreds of um, different fishermen that are here that um, also come um, contributed to uh, fishing and the fishing foundation of Waimanalo. So again, you can hear this name come up a lot. Um, uh, Uncle Haywood Kalima, uh, spearhead, spear leader, and spearhead and, and, the, and the spearhead of, of this um, revitalization of Kayona Beach Park and Waimanalo Fort
But um, this is, again, this is a special tribute and, you know, always a special uh, part of this area. And so what we do at the, our Barmanalo Boat Ramp Field Tournament is we invite all participants to bring a lay on the day of the tournament. And we do a lay presentation. Take a moment, we, we take a moment of silence to, uh, you know, bring us back to our past and bring us back to the people that um, were so important in, in, in the fishing community here in Waimanawa uh, because it's important to know where you come from uh, and and know where we, we, we've come and, and to know where we're going. So this is uh, definitely uh, an important part and a, an important tribute to this place and you know talk about the beginnings. Uh, there it is, the beginnings of uh, our, um, our fishing community. Uh, that's the that the, the kipuna. This is uh, the, the shoulders that we stand on today. So that's 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 a little bit of information about this special place.